بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدي وحبيبي ونور قلبي طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها أب القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد In continuation of the khutbah قال عمير المؤمنين علي عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام بطيع القيام سريع إذا قام فإذا أنتم ألنتم له رقابكم وأشرتم إليه بأصابعكم جاءه الموت فذهب به فلبثتم بعده ما شاء الله حتى يطلع الله لكم من يجمعكم ويضم نشركم فلا تطعموا في غيره عين مقبل ولا تيأسوا من مدبر فإن المدبر أساء أن ننزل به إحدى قائمتيه وثبت وتثبت الأخرى فترجع حتى تثبت جميعا ألا إن مثل آل محمد صلى الله عليه وآله كمثل نجوم السماء إذا خوى نجم طلع نجم فكأنكم قد تكاملتم من الله فيكم الصانع الصنائع وأراكم ما كنتم تأملون وصدق أمير المؤمنين سلام الله عليه اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد In continuation of the khutbah 99 which Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen salam Allah alayhi continue to describe the Holy Prophet and his families. We have talked about the part of the khutbah where Imam Ali alayhi salam described the Prophet and we got to the point where he said Bati'ul Qiyam where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi bati'ul qiyam which means the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is very slow of steps and here when you look at the khutbah Imam Ali alayhi salam describing the Holy Prophet in terms of actions sometimes we describe the Prophet the way he talks here he talks about the prophet the way he walks and he says that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he walks he walks very slow and slow doesn't mean slow to the point where islam discourages it because when you go to the quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how we should walk. And that is one of the beauty of Islam and Quran. Even how to walk is mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us there are three different kinds of walk. Two of them is not correct. It's not encouraging Islam. One of them is encouraged. The first one which is discouraged, Quran says, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَ Do not walk. Al-marah is a walk of what we call today as the tyrant walks. When the tyrant walks, they walk as, according to the Quran, they walk as when they step on the ground, the ground is going to crack. But that kind of steps is the steps of arrogance. Quran said, don't walk like that. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْعَرْضِ مَرْحَةِ Quran said, when you walk, do not walk as those tyrants. 
when they walk, they walk with all this arrogance boosting their chest. Then they walk, they walk to look at everybody that everybody is a slave to them. No, they don't walk like that. Then he says also, when you walk, do not walk faster. Like some people when they walk, it's like somebody is chasing them. No, no. Quran says, do not walk so slow like the walk of those tyrants and do not walk also too fast. How should I walk? I say, waktasid fi mashyik. Al-iqtisad in Arabic means somewhere in the middle, which means not too fast and not too slow. Somewhere moderate between the two. And that is one of the beauty of Islam. And when you go to the teaching of Quran, you see Islam always emphasize moderation in most of the things. Most of the things. For example, even when you go to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَقْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ أُنْقِكْ وَلَا تَبْسُطُهَا كُلَّ الْبَسْطَ Ya Rasulullah, even when it comes to giving, he said there are three different kinds of people who give. One is some people, they give everything and end up being with nothing. Some people, they keep everything. They don't want to share anything. Then the Quran says, Ya Rasulullah, don't be like this. No, don't be like the other ones. What should I be? I say, be moderate. Which means, share and keep some for yourself. That is the teaching of Quran. Now here also, Imam Amir al muminin when he described Rasulullah, he said, Bati al qiyam Which means, when he walks, Rasulullah doesn't walk fast. No, he walks very slow. It's somewhere in the middle. Right? That is what he says. And then he says, Sariya on also. Sariya on idha qam. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he stand to do something, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now here is so amazing. So amazing. That this part, this part of the khutbah, I really can put it with the surah at tawbah how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described Rasulullah. In the end of Surah At-Tawbah, Allah said, لَكَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا أَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ These are all Quran verse where Allah talks about the Prophet. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this messenger, this Rasulullah, he is so concerned about you. And he has so much compassion and love for you. Right? Now, how can you translate that love? Imam Ali translate that compassion about the Prophet in this verse. How does it do? He says, whenever you bend your head towards him, or whenever you point finger at him, which is, you needed his help, he is always running towards you. Where can you find a leader like this? Today you in America, you need your president, can you call him with a finger? No. Which country can you find today where you can call your president, president, and he comes to you? Forget about this. Now you go to the history. History tells us some of the khulafa, some khulafa, when they call them by name, they become angry. So why are you calling me by name? You are not supposed to call me. You're supposed to do what? Call me Khalifa to Muslimin. One example, Harun al-Rashid, one of the Khulafa, Harun al-Rashid, one time he was walking in the middle of the desert. Bahlul saw him and Bahlul called him, Ya Harun, Ya Harun. Harun was so angry and he turned, he's, who is this who's calling me by name? How dare can he call me by name? He said, bring him here. They brought Harun, uh, Bahlul. He looked at him and said, do you know who am I? Balul said, Yes, I know you. Say, Oman Anna, who am I to you? Allahu Akbar. Balul, when you look at him, he says, Ya, ha, ya Harun. He said, You are until Levi Ida Zulim Ahadun, Fi Aksal Ard, Sa'alaka Allahu Anhu Yawm Al Qiyam. You want to know who you are? You are the one who took the responsibility of the, human, of the nation where if someone in any part of the world, in the remote world, whatever they do, you are responsible of them Yawm al Qiyam in front of Allah. Say, who that's who you are? Harun al-Rashid, when he heard this, this was somehow, it touched his heart. 
he busted into tears. Then he turned and said, Ya Bahlul, he said, your words are so touchy. He said, Edni, tell me something. Advise me. Harun Bahlul looked at him and he says, Ya Harun. He says, Law kunta fi sahara fa He said, my advice to you is question I want to ask you. To teach you something, to advise you something. But my question is, Ya Harun, if you happen to be in the desert, and you become thirsty, and you have no water, and you are at the edge of death, as a come to thee, how much are you willing to sacrifice to get a glass of water? And the Harun al Rashid said, Nisfuma Amlik, half of what I own, my money, and everything that I have, I'll give half of it. For a glass of water, so I can save my life. Then Mahlul said, Ya Harun Hassanan Taf'al. That's a good thing. So my second question, Ya Harun, he says, Law sharibta, after you drink the water, Fahubisat fi badanik. Then for some reason, the water got stuck into your system. You want to go to the bathroom, the, the water doesn't come out. It got stuck for some reason. He said, Kem tufdi, how are you willing to sacrifice? For that you can get yourself relieved. He says, and Nisful Baqi. I give other half. Then Bahlul look at him and he said, My point is done. He said, Ya Harun, La Qimata fi Mulkin Qimata hu Shurba to ma iwa bowl. He said, Ya Bahlul, my point is. You want to tell me your whole kingdom that you proud, you kill mu'mineen, you prison them, you torture them. All of this is based on a glass of water and the bathroom that you're willing to give all what you own because of bathroom and the glass of water. The point is he wants to tell Ya Bahlu, Ya Harun, all this tyrant and killing and torturing and, 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 and that you do to the mu'mineen, it's not worth it because of this kingdom that you think you are. That is the message that Harun al Rashid, uh, Bahlul was given to Harun al Rashid. Now, the point is this these are some of the Khulafa. Or you come to the Prophet, Imam Ali says, He says, that he talk about the Prophet. Whenever any companion just turned his hand and finger calling the Prophet, he said, The Prophet rushed to them. When somebody even bend their neck towards the Prophet, the Prophet rushed and make sure that their need is taken care of. That is the good kind of leader. And Quran tells us about him. It says, Rahim. Amazing the word that Allah used when you go to the tafsir. We have the word Ra'uf and Rahim. And Ra'fa and Rahma, if you go to the Arabic term, they say they all mean the same. Ra'uf means kind or merciful, right? Rahim most merciful too but in arabic they say there are two different there are difference between them they say ar-ra'fatu is used for mercy in the heart when somebody you can tell from their heart that this person is very compassionate it's called ra'uf ar-rahim is when the person started to practice that compassionate outside which means Rasulullah, he was not just compassionate in the heart and not physically. No, he was both. You can see from his heart the way he talks and you can see the way he acts. And here's more important because, you know, sometimes people can say things, but they don't practice it. Allah wants to tell you the compassionate of the prophet is not just by words. You see it in his words and you see it in his actions as well. That is who kind of this prophet was. And the Imam Ali alayhi salam, he continued to describe the Prophet and he said, He said, Ja'ahul Maut, this Prophet is like any other human being. The death comes to him as the death comes to any one of us. And the death is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from day one, He created every creature. Allah has made it as a law and a mandatory that every life has to come to an end. And that is part of the Allah's kingdom. That the only one who remains is Him. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the Prophet, Allah spoke to him in the Quran. He said, mayyitun wa innahum mayyitun. Afa khalidun. khalidun. Ya Rasulullah, you will die, and so us, they will die as well. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he said, Ja'ahul maut. Death came to the Prophet. But one thing that is important, the death that came to the Prophet is not like the death that comes to any of us. According to the history, the death when Jibreel came to Rasulullah, Jibreel, where the, the Malakul Maut, when he came to the Prophet, the only man that the, the angel of death ever asked permission was Rasulullah. The angel of death never, never came to anybody and asked them, can I take your life? No. It's not a matter of a question. It's a matter of done deal. Right? But when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came and he asked him permission. Ya Rasulullah, do I have your permission to take your life? Then the Prophet says, what is it that after death? Then the angel of death started to describe, Ya Rasulullah, before I left the heavens, he said, all the doors of Jannah are open for you. Not only that, he says that every angel that Allah ever created, they all are waiting and welcoming your arrival, Ya Rasulullah. He said, what else? He said, Ya Rasulullah, because of your arrival, everything in Jannah is now waiting to see you, Ya Rasulullah. But at the end, all is your decision if you want to come or you want to stay. Then he says, the last one, Ya Rasulullah, your Allah, your creator, is anxious to meet with you. Then the Prophet said, Ya Malakul Maut, I will never, never take anything beyond, or I will not take anything more than being close to my Lord and my creator. He said, take the, take the amount of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the angel of death came and started taking that. A man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here Imam Ali is, he said, Ja'ahul Maut. He said, the death came to him. Fadhaba bihi. And the death took him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is the custom. We are staying here. Before we came, there were people who lived here. And they left. Now it's our time that we're living here. A time will come, we will also be a story. We go. It happens. Simple example. In our lives, we have people that we know. They were with us today, they are not. And they will come, we will also be the same. Death have to take us. And that is what the lesson of Imam Ali teaching us. And then he continued to say, he says, فَلَبِثْتُمْ بَعْدَهُ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ And you get to leave after this prophet until the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. After the prophet, people lived. Left in Islam because the prophet died. Life, life continues. But as everybody has the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned, some live long, some live short lives, some don't even see this world. Some people die in the mother's womb, some died right after birth, some died after a few years of life, some died after becoming teenagers, some died after they become young adults, and so on and so forth. And Quran mentioned all of this is a matter of time that Allah has assigned for any one of us. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam continued and he said Hatta yutli Allahu lakum man yajma'ukum He said this will continue until Allah brings out for you one who would come and collect you together and bring you all together. Which means after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah would not leave you unattended. There have to be somebody who will come and take that position of the Prophet and bring you together. And this is a very important message from this khutbah that Imam Ali wants to tell us against what we hear. Because sometimes there is a lot of this notion that Rasulullah died and did not appoint anybody. And he left the ummah to decide for themselves who will become the next successor. Now Imam Ali tells, no, that was not the case. Allah is the one who gets to appoint somebody who can come after the Prophet. Because one thing we have to understand, this Islam is not my religion or your religion to make the decision who to become the who, who to become prophet or who to become the Imam. These are positions that are only Allah is the one who chooses them. And Imam Ali confirms that that Allah is the one to choose who to become the successor after the Prophet. 
that Allah will bring somebody to bring the mu'mineen together after the Prophet. And then he says, وَيَضُمُّكْ وَيَضُمُّ نَشْرَكُمْ فَلَا تَطْعَمُوا غَيْرَ مَنْ مُقْبِلٍ Imam Ali alayhi salam, he then continued to say, and fuse you after diffusion, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the things he does, after his death, somebody have to take the position and make sure that the same job that the Prophet used to do, somebody continues. And one of them, Imam Ali mentioned, he said, whenever there is any problem among the Ummah, one of the responsibilities of the Prophet is what? To solve the problem. When people have dispute, where do they go? At the time of the Prophet, they go to him. Now the Prophet passed away. Does that mean people are not going to argue? No. Does that mean people are not going to fight? Of course, he has the war. Now when the Prophet is no longer among them, where will they go to get their problem solved? Imam Ali alayhi salam says, that is also when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to appoint somebody. And those are the ones that we call Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. That after the Prophet, people get to go to them to solve their problems and take care of their needs. Example that, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will do during the time of his life. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he continues and he says, وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ مُدَبِّرٍ He says, so that you don't become hopeless. Because if you have a father, and the father is no longer there, and there is nobody to replace the father, wouldn't you become hopeless? Rasulullah is a father to this ummah. When the Prophet died, there must be somebody who can replace the Prophet and take care of people's needs so that people wouldn't fail orphans. People wouldn't get confused where to go. Right? That is why the Prophet wasallam, before he died, he made sure constantly, continuously, was mentioning that after me is my Ahlul Bayt. Inni tarikun fikum al-thakalain kitab Allahi wa itrati ahl bayti. Imam Ali also mentioned, he says, so that you don't become hopeless, you don't become confused. Now the Prophet is not there. Who should we go to? Who can solve our problem? Who can be a father to us after the Prophet? Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ مُدَبِّرٍ فَإِنَّ الْمُدَبِّرَ حَسَىٰ أَنْ نَزِلَ بِهِ إِحْدَىٰ قَائِمَتَيْ Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, so that do not place expectation in one who does not come forward and do not lose the hope in one who is veiled. He said, do so that you don't lose hope that the Prophet is not there, nobody to take care of us. No, Allah is not going to put mu'mineen into that situation. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he continued to tell us about the position of this Prophet and his importance among us. He says, وَتُثَبِّتَ الْأُخْرَى فَتَرْجِعَ حَتَّى تُثْبِتَ جَمِيعًا Imam Ali alayhi salam, he continued, because it is possible that one of the two feet of the veil, one will may slip while the other may remain sticking. He says, Imam Ali is giving an example. He said, after the death of the Prophet, there are two situations. Some people might stick on the path of the Prophet or some people might slip because the Prophet is not there. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have to do? He has to make sure that there is someone after the Prophet who will keep people together and guide people. Example, the same, the same thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will do. And that is the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam. And this is where the importance of Ahlul Bayt comes in. And then the Prophet says, Ala now Imam Ali turns to Ahlul Bayt who can replace the Prophet after his death. And he says, the example of the Ahlul Bayt is like the stars. You know, when you look at the stars, some stars, when they, when they appear in the sky, they are shining while the others are invisible. And when others, those who become, who was shining, who was visible before, when they become invisible, then the ones that are, are, were invisible become visible. He said, that is the example of Ahlul Bayt. When one of them is there, the others are nothing but the followers. The moment that the first one, the previous one, become invisible, which is death, then the uh, this next one becomes visible for others. That is the example of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. That when Rasulullah was there, Imam Ali was follower. He was listening. He was obedient to the Prophet. 
But the moment the Prophet passed, he becomes visible. He becomes the Khalifa. He becomes the leader. Now, when Imam Ali was there, Imam Al Hassan and Hussein, they were invisible. They were followers of their father. Whatever Imam Ali said, that's exactly what they do. Until Imam Ali passed, then Imam Hassan becomes visible. He becomes the next Imam. He becomes the leader. When Imam Hassan was there, Imam Hussein was what? Was a follower. Whatever he, Imam Hassan said, it has to be done because he's the Imam of the time. Now, when Imam Hassan passes, then Imam Hussein becomes visible. That is how the rotation takes place. When one Imam is there, the rest were invisible and in obedience to the leading Imam. And when that Imam gone, the next Imam comes in the picture. That's example of what Imam Ali gave when it comes to the Ahlul Bayt. He said, they are like the stars. They are all stars, but they take turns. When one becomes visible, the rest stays invisible. And when the one that was, in, uh, was visible, when he goes invisible, then the next one takes the position so that people will continuously get the benefit from these stars and get benefit from this Ahlul Bayt. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he continued and he said also, إِذَا خَوَى نَجْمٌ He says, our example, beware the example of the descendant of Muhammad, peace and the blessing of Allah be upon him. He said, and his descendant, they are like the stars in the sky. When one star sets, another one rises. He said, that is how they are. When one sets off, the other one rises. That is how it has been. That's the custom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why one hadith says, he says, Allah will never ever leave the world without the ma'asum at any point. It's impossible. Why? Because yes, they said in the hadith, he said, because if one second Allah left the universe without the imam, without the ma'asum, he said, He said, the earth cannot survive without the ma'asum. They cannot. As they, it's impossible. How is it impossible? Because having ma'asum among the people in this world is like having the spirit or the soul in the body of human being. The way that if the body loses the ruh, the whole person dead, the same thing. If this world fail to have ma'asum one second, the world cannot exist. And if you want to understand this, Go to Hadith al kisa then you understand. Where Allah Himself was saying this. When Jibreel came to the Prophet and he says, Al Ali al A'la yukri'uka salam, wa yakhusuka bit tahiyyati wal ikram, wa yakulu lak inni ma khalaqtu sama'an mabniyan, wala ardan madhiyan, wala baharan yajri, wala fulkan yasri, wala kamaran muniran, wala shamsan mudi'an, illa lima. Allah was telling the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, this entire universe is not created except because of you. The shining sun, I say, couldn't exist without them. The moon, I say, couldn't exist without them. The earth couldn't exist without them. The ocean couldn't exist. Nothing can exist without them. And understand the power of Ahlul Bayt, alaykumussalam. That is Allah is telling us in Hadith al kisa so when Imam tells us, without the Imam, the world cannot exist, absolutely is the truth. Because the power of Imams among us is like the spirit in the body of human being. This world cannot exist without them. And that is what Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he is saying to us in the end of the khutbah, where he says, فَكَأَنَّكُمْ تَكَامَلْتُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِيكُمْ He says, so you are in the position that Allah's blessing on you have been perfected. He said, you have to understand how we are blessed by Allah for having these perfect human beings to be our guide. Really, having Ahlul Bayt is the greatest ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you want to understand this to go to the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say on the day of Ghadir, after the Prophet was ordered by Allah to appoint Imam Ali to be the next Khalifa after him, after the, everything was done, Allah says, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي. Today is the day of my blessings. 
How is it so? I say by appointing Imam Ali, that is the perfect blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wilayah of Ahlul Bayt is a blessing. It's a ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ali says the same thing. He says, you could not be blessed more than to have Ahlul Bayt to be your leader. That is why sometimes, brothers, we have to be grateful to Allah. And when you go to the Quran, Allah talks about the ayah of love of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Ayatul Mawadda, Kulla as'alukum alayya ajra illa al mawaddata fil qurba. Then he said, Woman yaktarif hasanata nazid lahu fiha husna, inna allaha ghafurun shakur. The word shukr was mentioned there after the ayah, at the end of the ayah. Be grateful for having Ahlul Bayt in your life. Because this is the ni'mah of Allah, the greatest blessings. Imam Ali alayhi salam said, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you by having the Ahlul Bayt to be your guide and your mentor. And then he says, he has shown you use of wish for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown you his wish upon you to have this Ahlul Bayt to be your leader. But now, how much can we turn and thank Allah for this blessing of having Ahlul Bayt. But unfortunately, instead of turning to Allah and thank Allah, what did we do? We turned to be ungrateful to Allah by killing them one after the other. That's what the return was. Instead of turning to thank Allah, we killed Imam Ali, they killed Imam Hassan, they killed Imam Hussein, they killed Imam, Z Imam, uh, Imam Zain al Abidin, then Imam Muhammad al Baqir, then Imam. Uh, then Imam ja Muhammad al Baqir, then Imam Jafar al Sadiq, then Imam Musa al Qadr, one after the other, until the last one that Allah wanted to protect. And Allah made him to become in his occultation so that he can be protected. That is how we treated this Ahlul Bayt. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be those who appreciate and acknowledge the power of Ahlul Bayt and the values among us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be the true followers and to be also those who will be their true servant in this world and the hereafter. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. How can we um, put these two things together? One is, can we be? How can we be moderate and giving, which is give some and keep some, and also looking at Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam when they all gave everything. Like the the eye of the Quran, where Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam they gave everything. How can we? How can we put these two together? Um, the answer is, when it comes to giving, there are different levels. It's not one level. There are different levels to the point where one level is what the ayah is talking about. Which means, Islam allowed us to give and take care of us as well. That is the one level. But there is another level, which Quran calls it, see, when you go to the Quran, there are different terms. The first one, Quran calls it infaq, which is giving something. Right? I take care of myself, and I take care of others too. That's called infaq. But the second one, which is the highest one, Quran doesn't call it infaq. Quran calls it ithar. Ithar means sacrifice. Which means, I gave everything for others, and even though I am going to suffer. In other words, it's like a candle. When you set, when you turn the candle, what does he do? For the candle to give you a light, it has to burn itself. 
so you and I can get benefit from that light. Even though the candle is burning itself, it's burning, it's going to finish. But at the end, who's going to make benefit? It's me and you. That is the example of Ahlul Bayt. They are willing to sacrifice and go through hardship and difficulty for others to make use of them and benefit from them. That is the highest mark. And that is called in the Quran, Al-Ithar. And Allah mentioned, That level is another level. Which Quran says, you can follow the steps of Ahl al-Bayt if you can. But the lowest level is for us, where Islam says, you give some and keep some. But if you want to go beyond that, yes, you can. As long as you can. But how many of us can go to that point? That is the question.